The 1993 live-action Super Mario Bros. is a terrible film, a cinematic example that leaves a confounding taste in your mouth and invokes questions like why or what the hell were they thinking. Yet the film has a surprisingly dedicated cult following, one that I am unapologetically a part of. Yes, I do like this movie, but I also recognize how bad it is, yet there's an appeal about it that just keeps bringing me back, so much so that I've gone so far to buy the DVD and eventually upgrade to the Japanese Blu-ray. By no means is Super Mario Bros. a cinematic achievement, but something that I like to call cinematic quiche, similar to how one enjoys Tommy Wiseau's The Room or Michael Bay movies. You know they're stupid and ridiculous, yet there's an entertaining itch about them that's near impossible to scratch. The Mario film defines this perfectly, but its imperfections are equally impossible to scratch off. The plot is mostly consistent with the rescue elements of the original game, and Koopa is actually given a legitimate reason for kidnapping Daisy that's in line with what you expect out of a character like him. While the adaptation as a whole is baffling, there's some adapted elements I enjoyed, like how the film uses the bob how the fungus basically turns Dino Hatton into the Mushroom Kingdom, how the guns are the movie's version of the fireballs, and how the stomper boots are also the movie's version of Mario and Luigi's high jumps. The characters are mostly faithful except for a few. Mario and Luigi are done right. The chemistry between Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo feels genuine, like a true example of yin and yang but it's most likely the result of the alcohol they consume between takes. Either way, Hoskins is pitch perfect as Mario, despite the poor script and defaulting into Eddie Valiant at times. Leguizamo seems to be having a good time, but again, that may be the alcohol driving his performance. Regardless, his rendition of Luigi is serviceable enough to even out Hoskins' more grouchy performance. My only major gripe is that the Mario Brothers don't don their iconic overalls till the last 30 minutes of the movie. Dennis Hopper is the best thing about the film, or rather, my favorite thing about the film. While it's not the best performance of his career, it is his performance that stands out because his scenes are the most memorable parts of the film. Guy in charge. Uh, Monkey. Samantha Mathis is insanely cute, but unfortunately, that's all she's really good for. She's only eye candy for fanboys and a plot device to move the narrative forward and give Luigi a reason to cross dimensions. But you could argue that Daisy's role in the film remains exactly the way it is in the video games. But the movie could have taken some risks, like having Daisy save the kidnapped women while riding Yoshi or leading her people against Koopa as she rides Yoshi into battle. But this Daisy is just another damsel in distress. Other supporting characters like Yoshi, Toad, Big Bertha, Lena, Iggy and Spike add little to nothing and take the lead characters in obstacles that they could have easily overcome without the help or interference of the supporting characters. Alan Silvestri's score is serviceable but nothing memorable compared to his better soundtracks like Back to the Future or Predator. I'm still not too crazy about the main theme. It sounds fitting for a family film, yet the tone of the movie zigzags between dark dystopian to family friendly. As a result, the music fits and doesn't fit depending on the tone of each scene. The production design is decent, but it feels like an off-brand iteration of Blade Runner or Total Recall. But the practical effects look really good. The Goombas look very detailed and almost lifelike, as if they inserted a real snake or lizard on top of the suit. Yoshi looks like a real dinosaur. I give props to the effects crew for succeeding in retaining Yoshi's cuteness while making him look realistic. The pacing is really not that much of an issue. It's a pretty short film if you exclude the end credits, but the film is so weird and polarizing that you hardly notice the time slipping by. Much of the film's weirdness can be attributed to directors Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel. I read the early version of the script that convinced the directors and cast to join before the mandated rewrites, while that version was more balanced, coherent, and even adapted a Mad Max-like Mario Kart sequence, it still had the same aberration as the final film. Regardless, Morton and Jankel are not completely to blame for the film's failures. The producers sucker-punched them with mandated rewrites before and during filming, and the directors were contractually obligated to defend those changes that unfortunately strained their relationship with the cast and crew, specifically Hoskins and Hopper. Despite all this, Morton and Jankel were able to salvage a disaster into a disaster piece. Super Mario Bros. has enough replay value warranted by its quirks and creative idiosyncrasies that makes it too irresistible to simply shrug off as a simple bad movie. Yes, Morton and Jankel's Super Mario Bros. movie is a bad 
film, but it's enjoyably bad and unapologetically entertaining in a perplexing sort of way. And because of that, I award Super Mario Bros. 2.5 stars out of 4.